Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of science's best communicators, reminds us, quote, the good thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe in it, unquote. This is because scientific knowledge is built on an objective system that, when followed with rigor, is not influenced by our beliefs or our preconceptions. To effectively use the scientific method, Neil deGrasse Tyson summarizes that you must be objective. You must, quote, do whatever it takes to avoid fooling yourself into thinking something is true that is not, or that something is not true that is true. As humans, we're really good at fooling ourselves. That's why it's so important to design a method, the scientific method, that protects us against our tendency to believe that what we want to be true is true. We begin this week by appreciating how science works and how the scientific method is used to advance our understanding of the world around us. The scientific method is the means by which we use observation, objective measures, and experimentation to test hypotheses and collect data that explain in objective terms the way the world works. Generally speaking, the scientific method consists of the following steps in a very iterative, ongoing, and cyclical process. We enter this process by observing the world around us. Based on our observations, we begin to ask questions. Based on these questions, we do some background research and we start to formulate our own testable hypothesis. We design experiments that then test the hypothesis. And then we let the data from those experiments determine whether or not the hypothesis is correct, whether it needs refinement, or it's incorrect and it should be refuted altogether. After a large body of data is accumulated, it contributes to our ability to make a theory of how a given phenomenon works. Let's look at an example. You're an entomologist, a scientist who studies insects, and you're working in agriculture. You have observed that insects can be very detrimental to agriculture as they carry many of the plant diseases and feed on the sap of the plants. You've observed that insects called aphids are able to send signals to communicate with one another. Specifically, they appear to be sending a warning substance that signals aphids to disperse. As an entomologist, you know that one way to control aphids is by applying chemicals. But you wonder, if you can harness this aphid alarm signal and use it to scare aphids off of important crop plants without the need for chemical pesticides that can be harmful to the environment. You form a hypothesis that the repellent, when applied to plants, will cause aphids to disperse away from the molecule, the substance you've put on the plant. You test this hypothesis through carefully designed experiments. You repeat your experiments, and then you collect the data that then determine whether or not aphids are consistently deterred from plants where the signal substance is present. Perhaps your data show that aphids are deterred. After repeating the experiment, you now expand your hypothesis to test whether plants can produce their own version of this aphid-deterring substance. This hypothesis, and a series of elegant and sophisticated experiments, was the basis for an important project undertaken at Rothamsted Research over the last several years. We are going to take a close look at how this team of scientists used the scientific method to test whether they could reduce pesticide use by creating plants that produce their own aphid alarm signal and thereby have the inherent protection from damaging effects of aphids. This story illustrates the utility of the scientific method and how even negative results are important in informing our hypotheses. This story also illustrates why it's important to build on a series of experiments, the data from each contributing a piece of the scientific puzzle. This example also illustrates the importance of communicating our results to other scientists and to the public at large. To explore this, let's travel to Rothamsted Research in Harpenden, England.